So, so here are the like four different countries, and I want to point something out here about how this matters. So you said something about this, but let me point something out here really fast. So these are the GDPs of these four countries. And 1965 and 2019, and you think 1965 in China was $69 billion U.S. This is all in U.S., right? And uh, in, in, in 2019, about $14.2 trillion. Like, look at, look at the, like, the growth, cheesy, is, is amazing. Korea, by contrast, this is 1965, right after the war. Korea was a poor, poor country, a really poor country. And $3.1 billion was the GDP in 1965, which, is like, which was less than, I don't know, it was less than like Algeria, less than Ghana. Right, less than so many other countries. And look at right now, it's 1.5 trillion, which isn't a lot compared to China or the United States, but it's so much compared to where it was in 1965. I mean, the growth is, it's unprecedented in some ways in, in history. The US, 744 billion up to 21 trillion, obviously the largest economy in, world, in the world. And then look at, look at Mexico. So it's, it's, it's right behind Korea, but it started at 22 billion versus 3.1. So when you have this, so what I want to ask the, the, the two of you, so let me ask the two of you, when you see this and look at like China, look at, look at the growth between China and Korea and so on. What does that, what do you imagine? Just what, what story do you tell about their lives? Like, do you, do you, like, do you what kind of story do you have? Like, I'm, I'm I don't. I don't know them. Yeah. Okay. I, no. 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 But no. But think about this. They're coming from countries like this. What's the story you have about these people, or these people who were like was a poor country, and suddenly now is just f flooded with so much wealth, right? Um. For me, I think like technology and education. Mm -hmm. Like they definitely. I mean, to go from like that to like being so much more wealthier I'd say like when I think of China I think of like high technology like they produce a lot of things like and like a good education like everyone I met from there seems like highly educated so I'd say that definitely has something to do with it mm -hmm. and part of part of that is the people you meet who are certainly coming over here are more educated uh-huh but yeah how about let me ask the two of you like what tell me that what's the story yo Yung Sung right What's the, like the Korea story, right? Well, how does that play into material well-being? Like what, what do people n not understand about Korea, let's say? You said something about it earlier, but maybe just say more. So I believe students in this class haven't gone through any poverty in their childhood, or some of them may have, but um, most of us have like, um, their father's um, working is a working capital mm -hmm. who is um, just medium or above medium mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and whose salary is medium or above medium and my family my father as well is has grown himself into those level and I'm the result mm -hmm. So he was able to go from nothing to something. And then you're the result of that. I'm and how many people, like, how much do you talk about that in Korea? How much do Koreans talk about that? All this new sudden wealth and, you know, advancement and so on. How much is that? Like, how much do you talk about the past and where Korea was and now where it is? We don't usually talk about our like um, wars, but when you visit our grandfather, they told us about how mm -hmm. they grew up in their childhood, how they've been through their life, <laughs> that so, kind of thing. Yeah. So are you t are you told about it a lot? Yes, and that's kind of cultural thing that we embrace. Mm -hmm. throughout our life mm -hmm. so it's a cultural thing that you like really take that in so this so seeing some kind of like in the u.s so D danielle 
Like, when I think about the U.S., it's like, well, when I was young, or go back a while, the U.S. has been the dominant economy in the world for a long time, so I don't even really think about it. But, you know, Korea went from one of the poorest countries in the world to now the 12th largest economy in the world. It's like this is a major shift in the way Koreans see things. I mean, it's like, my God, it, it has such a transformative power to it. Choosy, how, how about you? Like, how is that? Um, actually, uh, there is a joke. It's just a joke uh, I'd like to share. Uh, I just see this uh, before the class. Uh, it says, the first generation of Chinese, normal labor. The second generation Chinese, maybe the restaurant owner, the ma restaurant manager. As the second, second generation Chinese, maybe the uh, business or the engineering. And the fourth Chinese, fourth generations, politicians or artists. You can, you can see uh, it's always growing. Uh, and ordinary people in um, the Western world. I, I know probably this is not so good, but this is exactly I read from the Reddit. The first generation. Well, then it's true. <laughs> the first actually. generation of Italian selling pizza, second selling pizza, third selling pizza, fourth selling pizza. <laughs> yeah, this is just a joke. It's just a joke. Yeah. <laughs> So the yeah. Americans will be selling McDonald's, but, you know, in, Chang in ch speaking Mandarin or, or Cantonese, maybe. So. Yes, and, and from, from the chart of this, you know, it's a, a micro from, from the uh, country state. But from, from my personal uh, perspective, there are a lot of people from the zero to one, from the one to the hundred thousand million. Uh, you know, uh, Chinese really love to start their business even just a normal small restaurant because but yeah. they don't want their kids to do it they their kids they want to do something else yes and we and we, that's it's not uncommon here in the US right so maybe the two of you could say something about this even in Mexico it's not uncommon here but it's like there's just a way in which this new found wealth like i don't think that you can here let me just see if i can say this right because i want i want you to really see this you got to, it's like envision growing up, like here in the United States, when you, you grew, you know, like I grew up in this country that was the number one economy in the world when I was a kid. All my life it was the number one economy and it's all, it's, and the assumption is it will be the world's largest economy until China overtakes us, which China will, right? I mean, it's on track to be doing that pretty, pretty soon. And, but to understand what it would be to grow up in a world like, you know, like, like these, these two guys right here, to grow up in a place where the economy wasn't the number one economy, it was actually really poor, and then in a matter of just a few decades, just became this dominant global power, and you're living that. And it has such an impact on the way everything happens, the values and the mores and the way you think about life and the way all of your values, like what makes you happy and what should be. And it's disruptive because it has to be disruptive because you, you, it can't be otherwise. That's the nature of how you, you know, like I was actually going to have someone from the Arab Middle East, in particular, somebody from Saudi Arabia up here as well. And then I decided we would do something else. But like it's a very similar to this kind of new wealth that we see in the Arab world, especially like in Qatar and the Emirates and in Saudi and to a lesser degree, Oman. Um, but you know what I mean? So you have such a very different experience than these two women over here.